This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClelland. When Cape Girardeau voters head to the ballot box in November, they'll be given a chance to extend a one-eighth cent portion of a fire sales tax. Here to talk about the tax extension is Cape Girardeau Fire Chief Rick Ennis. Thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Jacob, thanks for having me. So we've had this tax for about, about a decade now. Um, could you tell us how, a little bit about how it's changed public safety in Cape Girardeau in the, in the, in the last 10 years or so? Sure. Uh, the tax has really enhanced our ability to provide public safety services to the community um, uh, in the way of some staffing issues, um, uh, primarily in apparatus and equipment, vehicles and equipment, and our facilities. Um, it was able, it was allowed us to upgrade uh, all of our apparatus, equipment, and facilities. Or not all of them, but some significant upgrades. Um, again, that allows us to to deliver services in a mo much more effective, much more efficient, and safer um, manner, especially safety to our personnel. What were the uh, the facilities and the equipment and such? What was that like before this this tax was originally passed back uh, back before 2004? Um, prior to 2004, um, over the years, just because of um, lack of funding to, to keep up maintenance of facilities and apparatus and equipment, um, over a period of time, the, the condition and the, and the quality, the safety, and the reliability of, of that apparatus and equipment started to deteriorate. Um, and it had gotten to the point where uh, it, was, it was pretty significant. And I, I told a story. Um, when I came here 10 years ago to enter, interview for the job, it was, it was sev several months before the fire tax was put on. And I flew into the Cape Girardeau Airport and drove up and uh, stopped to get something to eat in one of the, one of the restaurants. Um, and there was, while I was waiting for the meal, there happened to be a paper laying there. And on the front page of the Missourian was a picture of a fire truck broke down with the mechanic under it. And, it, and the story was the, the uh, fire department had dropped down to one operable fire engine in the city f in that day because everything else had broken down. And I said I almost got back on the plane and flew back <laughs> out. But um, I was looking for a challenge. So, so, you know, fortunately I got the job and uh, we were dealing with that fire sales tax. Um, so the, the apparatus uh, was, was again in a state of disrepair um, and in a state of uh, unreliability a lot of times. Uh, and it was not through anybody's neglect or, you know, or um, just not caring. It was about we just didn't have the resources to, to do the maintenance. Uh, some of the facilities, again, were, were wearing out. We were outgrowing the facilities. Uh, we we're still running out of the fire station on, uh, on, um, up off of uh, Olive Street that was um, you know, built in the 50s and the apparatus didn't fit in that station anymore, you know, the newer apparatus. Um, so we had a lot of issues. Some of the safety equipment we were, were wearing or providing for our personnel was outdated um, uh, and, and questionable, marginal, I guess the right word is, on, on safety. Um, and then the police department also had several issues and several um, hurdles to overcome. Uh, they were driving used police cars and and uh, lack some of the, the modern day safety equipment. So it, it created an issue. Before this tax came in, were there problems with, uh, with, uh, with turnover, for instance, with, with personnel? Uh, yeah, the police department was experiencing quite a bit of turnover um, uh, with personnel due to the, the salary structure. The fire department was also experiencing uh, some significant turnover. Uh, we also had some staffing issues. It was creating a lot of overtime. Um, so that original tax in 2004, as you know, it's, it's a quarter cent tax, but it was structured in a way that an eighth of a cent was permanent for operations, and that helped ad address um, the uh, salary structure and the, allowed us to hire a few more, uh, three more firefighters, um, and, and that, again, is continuous. So the other eighth of a cent uh, was uh, a 10 year sunset was placed on that and that was designated for capital improvements. And that's the portion of the tax we're talking about now is renewing that one eighth cent tax. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. If this, uh, this one eighth cent portion of the taxes is, is renewed by voters. I mean, what are some of the facilities and equipment that could be, uh, that could be, that could be upgraded um, in, the, in the future? Well, we're to the point now where we're not really upgrading because we did that in 2004. We took the department from probably the 1990s, 1980s, 1990s into 2004, 2005. Um, but now we, our, our challenge is to maintain that level that we've achieved. Um, so we, we wouldn't really upgrade to you know, newer technology, although uh, you know, some of that technology obviously comes along with, uh, with upgrades. 
um, but our goal is just to maintain the, the effectiveness and the safety of our apparatus and equipment. Now, as, as I understand it, part of this would also include a, uh, a new firehouse on, to replace the one on, on Curry Lane, correct? Yeah, Curry Lane's uh, station was built in 1974. And again, like Fire Station 3 that we replaced with the last tax, we're outgrowing it. It's a smaller station. The apparatus uh, doesn't really fit in it anymore. Uh, the living quarters are kind of cramped. Um, so we're looking at, at uh, replacing that station. Well, why is this an important part of town to have a, to ha to ha to have a new station at? Well, ironically, um, it's very important now. The, the city's kind of divided off into quadrants, uh, and each quadrant has a fire station in it to, to um, keep response times uh, quick for fire and medical calls. Um, ironically, when Fire Station 4 was built in 1974, it was the slowest firehouse or the least active firehouse in the city because of the activity levels, the, the population uh, numbers in that quadrant of the city was, was low. Um, however, with the development, uh, that station has become just as active as any of the other stations. Um, and with the growth and development occurring in the northwest section of the city, that's, that's become even more critical. And as I understand it, there will be some, uh, some renovations and additions at fire stations one and two. Um, could you kind of talk, talk about some of, the, some of the renovations and additions that we'll, that we'll see in, in, in those two places? Sure, Fire Station 1 on Sprigg Street was built in 1980, and Fire Station 2 out on Mount Auburn Road behind the mall was built in 1990. Um, both of those stations, again, while not as critically cramped, if that's a good word, as Fire Stations 3 and 4 were, um, we still are kind of outgrowing those stations as far as uh, apparatus and equipment. Uh, uh, Fire Station 2 is where we also do our maintenance. Um, so we would like to add an, an apparatus bay in each one of those stations, some storage. And then uh, more critically is upgrading the living quarters to those stations because again, they're, they were built to 1980, 1990 standards uh, and haven't been upgraded since. And, and how does this all work into the, uh, the puzzle of, of, uh, of a new police headquarters for the, for, for the city? How does this fit into that, uh, into that, that almost that, well, that three-pronged approach at finding sure, a way? Sure, the, the way it works is, uh, according to state law, the state law establishes the ability to pass various taxes uh, and, and makes them very specific on what you can use that money for. So just like the other taxes uh, that we have in the city, the fire sales tax by law, the, the revenue generated from that has to go to the operation of a fire department. Um, so when we, when we do do that, but uh, the, the city does have a mechanism so that the, that the fire tax money goes to the operation of the fire department, but it also frees up money that, that uh, can otherwise be spent uh, in other areas like the police department. So they're going to tap into uh, that ability um, to partially fund uh, the police station. We've been talking today with Rick Ennis. He's Cape Girardeau's fire chief. Thank you so much for, the, for, taking, for taking the time to come over and talk with us today. Oh, thanks for having me.